Howdy folks! No Man's Sky's procedural generation is probably my favorite aspect of the game to talk about. Some of it's really impressive, other parts surprisingly limited. Planet Generation has always been the game's most noteworthy yet controversial piece of procedural content. Generating an entire planet on a console is quite a feat. Generating quintillions upon quintillions of them, <laughs> that's something else entirely. While variety isn't quite as infinite as most folks would like, after dozens of updates, the game now features over 70 biome subtypes. And that's subtypes, not even variations. Combined with the various underground and underwater biomes available, there are over 1600 biome combinations, not including, you know, variations of flora and fauna, or other factors such as whether the system is inhabited, abandoned, or undiscovered, which can affect what structures spawn on a planet. Despite all of this apparent variety though, admittedly most planets do start to feel repetitive over time. A lush planet with glowing mushrooms and superheated storms doesn't feel too distinct from a toxic world with big mushrooms and toxic storms. While certain resources and foliage varies by biome, most elements remain consistent across multiple planets. Same sentinels, weather types, buildings, gravity. However, there are a few planets that are different, visually and functionally distinct, and those help mix things up every now and again. I'm Kanaju, and these are the most unique planets in No Man's Sky. Or the most unique planet types, rather. I'm ranking these based on how many unique mechanics or elements they feature. That said, they're not numbered, so feel free to interpret that as you like. Depending on your individual place in the universe, some biomes might be more common than others, but most of these are noticeably less common than the usual lush, toxic, radioactive, cold, hot, and desert biomes. Before I begin though, I'd like to remind you that this video is made possible by viewers like you. And <laughs> thank you! Become a channel member today and help the channel thrive while getting some benefits for yourself. Link is in the video description. But alright, let's begin with an honorable mention. Honey Deserts. Did you know there's a specific desert biome subtype that covers the planet's surface in these honeycomb structures? While scanning these honeycombs may not reveal any unique resources, destroying them will give you sticky, quote unquote, honey, <laughs> an important ingredient in many baking recipes. While that's technically a unique resource, it's not quite game changing enough to be considered a unique planet type, as otherwise the desert around it is what you'd expect to see. I wish these planets would feature like noticeably more insects, or that disturbing the honey would trigger some kind of insect attack, similar to the jellyfish underwater, but sadly there isn't much to differentiate honey collecting from regular mining. That said, I feel like I've seen more insect-like fauna on these planets, but that's strictly anecdotal on my part. Let me know if, if you've seen something similar in your experience. First up on our proper list though are hexagonal worlds, hexagon worlds. Honestly, just about every exotic biome could fit on this list at this position. Each exotic biome features its own unique flora and fauna, collectibles, and, and some even have their own atmospheric effects. However, I chose hexagonal worlds because they are perhaps the most visually distinct planet type from space. <laughs> this planet type's unique hexagonal terrain is unlike any other terrain in the game. Actually, this planet's unique hexagonal everything is unlike anything else in the game. You have hex plate bushes, hex plate trees, floating hex plates, sentient hex plates, hexaberry. Oh, <laughs> actually, hexaberry is surprisingly not unique to hex worlds. Yeah, still, these worlds are such a dramatic visual departure from anything else the game offers that I had to include them on my list of unique planet types. Next up are airless worlds. There are a few characteristics that set airless worlds apart from most planets. For one, they don't have native fauna or flora other than cave plants. Instead, their surfaces are covered with rocks or other petrified objects. Their skies are never cloudy, no water, no weather, no air, and no inhabited buildings. While your life support draining at an advanced rate would be enough to set these worlds apart on their own, we all know why they're really on this list. For some reason, 
airless worlds feature low gravity. All of them. Doesn't make any sort of astronomical or physics-based sense, but it makes exploring the surface on foot or in an exocraft a lot of fun. I wish we had low gravity on all moons rather than all airless worlds, but for now, these moons are the only places to experience low grav gameplay. Well, they used to be. Wink wink, more on that soon. <laughs> you can also find deposits of rusted metal on these planets, which is also odd given the lack of oxygen on airless worlds. <laughs> you know, the leading cause of rust. <laughs> but, <laughs> eh, what do I know? Anyways, next are volcanic worlds. It's pretty easy to see what sets volcanic planets apart from other worlds. I'll give you a hint though. Yep, volcanoes are another procedural element that I wish could occur on other planets, but alas, they're currently only found on volcanically active planets. While most volcanic planets look pretty similar to one another with only some colors swapped, they're quite distinct from most other biomes. Besides being the only planets with active volcanoes, they're also the only planets with any kind of lava on them. Pro tip, don't die in the lava because good luck retrieving your lost inventory from lava. Volcanic worlds are also the only planets where you can find basalt, a raw element used in exactly one <laughs> blueprint. So uh, not super useful, but hey, giant explosions, cool. So this next one probably doesn't belong so far up the list, but uh, they're not numbered, so no big deal, I guess. I present Bubble Lush Worlds, or Lush Bubble Worlds, um, not to be confused with Bubble Exotic Worlds. Bubble Lush Planets are like regular Lush Planets, except with a bunch of bubbles. I mean, you probably guessed that. Plus, they have bioluminescent grass, which is really cool. Now, I know what you're thinking. Can I do? Aren't Bubble Lush Worlds only visually unique? Otherwise, they're identical to Lush Planets. What sets them apart, eh? Even Honey Deserts have unique resources. What are you trying to pull here, huh? Now you're right. Bubble Lush Planets don't really have any unique resources. They have something even rarer. Unique weather. I'm talking about Bubble Storms. That's right, Bubble Storms only found on bubble lush planets, not bubble exotics. I've encountered bubble storms that don't seem to have any noticeable effect other than covering my screen in intense bubbles. I don't know, <laughs> this wouldn't be a list of unique planets if the one with bubble storms wasn't on it, right? Now, before I get to the final two planet types, which are easily the two most unique planet types in the game, I have another honorable mention, Marsh Worlds, home to these <laughs> weird little huts. While their constant fog and ominous haunted looking trees are definitely unique, it's actually for a more technical reason that I mention them here. You see, marsh planets are just about the only biome that can take on the characteristics of multiple biomes. Marsh planets can either be lush or toxic in nature. A lush marsh might feature palm trees and superheated rainstorms, while a toxic marsh could include giant mushrooms and acid rain. For many players, that may seem like an inconsequential detail, but for a dork like me, it means that Hello Games experimented with procedural generation beyond the norm. Bubble Lushes, Alien Lushes, and Frozen Dead Worlds are other examples of mixing elements of different biomes. It's the kind of thing that could make procedural generation a lot more interesting if implemented well. Though perhaps they did try it and the results were less than stellar. I suppose we'll never know. Okay, time for the last two planet types. The most unique planet types in the game. These types of planets offer unique gameplay and visuals. If you've enjoyed the video up to this point though, I'm contractually obligated to ask you to press the like button. You're not contractually obligated to press it, of course, but you are morally obligated to a certain extent, so feel free to think about that. Anyway, you probably guessed it, but Infested Worlds are some of the most unique planets in the game. Infested Worlds are a biome subtype that come in six varieties based on classic biomes. So you could find an infested planet that's like a desert, or you could find a frozen one. Infested planets are known as such for a few reasons. Firstly, while the fauna of these planets remains normal, 
The floor has been replaced with an infestation of unnerving growths reminiscent of living ships. Buildings have been infested with whispering eggs, and the ground has been infested with titan worms. Titan worm burrows can only be found on these planets. These burrows offer unique encounters featuring hungering tendrils and biological horrors, as well as unique resources as rewards. This all culminates to make exploring infested worlds more engaging from both the visual and gameplay perspective. I wish every major biome had an enemy or gameplay loop that was unique to it. Enemies that hide in the snow on frozen planets, or more dangerous carnivorous plants on lush worlds. Imagine hallucinogenic mushrooms on toxic worlds, or beasts that spit fire on scorched planets. I could even see radioactive creatures on isotopic worlds. Stuff like that. Exploring different planet types would feel more unique, I think, as a result. Eh, maybe. Finally though, we've arrived at the most unique planet type in the game. Added this year, in 2023, it represents the most dramatic departure in gameplay of any planet type in the game, despite essentially being applied on top of existing planets. Of course, I'm referring to dissonant worlds, corrupted planets. Added in the Interceptor update, these planets are the actual best. Visiting a dissonant world for the first time is a game-changing event. There's a purple hue in the atmosphere, and as you approach, the ground is covered in glowing crystals, littered with dead sentinels. There are new resources, Atlanta Dam and Radiant Shards. There are new points of interest, Crash Sentinel Interceptors and Harmonic Camps. You can obtain a new class of ship you've never been able to purchase. You interact with the remains of a new robotic race unseen anywhere else in the game. The camps feature a new class of multi-tools and a new currency. But most notably of all, you encounter sentinels that are completely different from those on every other world. They're not orange, they're purple, and they're misshapen into monstrous new forms. They guard extractors which provide even more new resources, and fighting them is a completely new combat encounter. I mean, everything you encounter on these planets is new and interesting. That extends to the weather too, as dissonant worlds feature some of the most unique weather in the game, gravity storms. My friend and I actually, we ran a test and using gravity storms, we were actually able to exit the atmosphere of a planet with just our jetpacks. <laughs> I'll put a link to the video at the end or in the description if you want to check it out. It's really funny. Storm ends and we're just like way up in the sky. <laughs> oh no! No! The weather updates aren't clearing now! But yeah, everything you encounter on these planets is just crazy unique. And eventually, once you advance far enough in the story of the game, these planets will open up again with a new race, new multi-tools, new language, and more. It's incredible. These planets not only look different, but they play differently too. In a game where most resources, buildings, and encounters can occur on any given planet, right? They're sort of interchangeable. It's kind of a miracle. No Man's Sky's planets have been designed to ensure that no matter where you are, you'll be able to find what you need. However, I believe, and a lot of other folks probably agree, that the game is at its most interesting when you stumble upon something that you can't find on other planets. Consistency is smart game design, and it's safer for players, but it can also be boring. <laughs> Anywho, I hope you enjoyed this look at some of the planets that break this repetition and offer something unique to the player, if only for a moment. And so ends my list of the most unique planet types in No Man's Sky. What did you think? Were you impressed by something you hadn't seen before, or do you feel like Hello Games could push the envelope further? I personally wish they would, but I also understand that greater consistency has led to overall higher player satisfaction over the years. Planets used to be inconsistent, and, well, the internet hated it, so Hello Games changed course. Now though, I think infested and dissonant worlds are great proofs of concept for more unique activities based on planet type. But what do you think? How would you improve variety in No Man's Sky? I've made a video tackling just that question that you can watch next. It'll pop up at the end of this video in a few seconds. First though, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like and feel free to subscribe if you're interested in more deep dives like this.
You can also become a valued member of the channel. If you'd like to support my efforts more directly, you get a sweet badge and access to some exclusive members only content. Link in the description. Regardless though, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!